Hello friends, foes, and other watchers on the internet. My name is Matt, and you're watching Hogwash Gaming. And if I look a little apprehensive, it's because we're having construction here, and it's odd for me to have a potential audience. Rather ironic. And today, I'm bringing an old game to the table. And if you take a look at it, it might just ring a bell. Pit is a game of collecting commodities, and I've been told it's a lot like the stock exchange, but I've never delved into the finer arts of economics, so I can't tell you if that's accurate or not. What I do know is there are lower value commodities like flax and hay, and higher value commodities like wheat. For each player, you use one commodity, and it doesn't matter which one. Let's say we're playing with three people. So in a basic game, you want to shuffle these and deal them to three players. So ideally, all your players will have nine cards. So let's look at a hand. In your hand, you want to sort them out to see how much of each commodity you have. And it looks like this player has a large amount of hay. Usually, this means that this player wants to be collecting hay. So, he's trying to get rid of two oats or two flax. The trading round begins when the dealer rings the bell. When that happens, you want to take your cards that you want to trade off and you say the number. Two. Two. I have two here. You can't mix commodities when trading. Let's say somebody said, ooh, I have two. I'll trade with you. What you do is you lay your cards on the table and push them towards the person. And then they give you two of theirs. Ah, you weren't going for flax. But we do have four flax now. So you have a decision to make. Do you want to go for flax or do you want to go for hay? Sometimes it's smarter to trade off your bigger number because they can't mix commodities. So if you're trading five hay and someone gives you five flax, that means you win. The goal of the game is to get nine of one commodity. Let's keep trading. Let's try trading one flax this time. One, one. I'll trade you one flax. What do we got? Yes, we've got some hay. Now let's try trading three. Three, three. I have three to trade. Three. Ah, someone wants to trade with us. Let's see what we got. Oh, yes, yes. Once you get all nine, you want to ring the bell. Everyone make sure that there are nine here, and if so, then the winner gets that many points. The first person to 500 points wins, and that's a basic game of Pit. But now it's time to introduce two new cards, the Bull and the Bear. The Bull is an interesting card. It counts as a wild card. So if you have eight of a commodity and the Bull card in your hand, you win. But be careful. If you're holding the Bull in your hand and someone else corners the market, then you lose 20 points. As for the bear, no matter who goes out, you will always lose 20 points if you're holding it. And yes, if you're holding both at the end and someone else goes out, you lose 40 points. So you may be wondering, how do you trade these off? Well, it's really simple. You can mix it in with another commodity. It's the only type of card that you can do that. One thing I love to do in this game is try to hide them with something else that starts with B. Kind of like this. Now here's an issue that I've run into while playing this game that the game tends not to pay attention to. When you have a certain amount of commodities and you throw two cards in, it's going to make the number of cards that each player is playing with be different. Two people are going to have ten cards and the other person is only going to have nine, which I see as kind of a problem. If you have four commodities, then two people are going to have ten cards and two are going to have nine cards. That never seemed fair to me, so a house rule that my family came up with is we would have a trash commodity, which simply means we would throw in an extra two cards to make up the difference. Everyone just had to make sure that they knew that oats was something that they couldn't collect all of. You don't have to do this, however, but in the original rules, people who had all nine and the bull got more points, which I don't think is fair. But whatever you choose, 
because each round, the dealer will probably be a different person. So if the dealer keeps changing, then the people who get less cards at the beginning of the game will change. So it's not always one person who has the advantage. Just something to think about when you start playing Pit. Now, you may have noticed that some of the cards have their corners cut off. That's because I got this game second hand, and uh, there's a reason why these corners are cut off. Um, it's because people don't want to get stuck with a bear, as I've discussed before. And sometimes cheaters will mark the card by bending a corner, or marking a corner, or something like that. So, in order to stop that cheating from being effective, people have cut off the corners of other cards that aren't the bear. And if I'm not mistaken, um, there's going to be a lot of wear on the back of these as well. Yeah, this, this deck isn't terrific because it's just been so battered and the bear is pretty easy to know what it is. Oh well. So, if that's the case, and it probably will be the case because people are a lot of cheaters, what you can do is when you're handing it off, hide it kind of in your hand. So, But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you try this game out. If there are other games that you'd like me to showcase, write it down in the comments section. And don't forget to subscribe. So until next game, this is Hogwash, over and out.